Private companies are making plans for vaccine mandates for their employers. Now, these require them to be vaccinated against COVID-19 before returning to the office or shop floor. So for more on this, we are joined by Ted Flett. He is an employment and human rights lawyer at Zubas Flett Law, and we've reached him in Toronto. Hello, Ted. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Good afternoon. All right, so let's jump right in. Do employers, this is a big question for so many people now that they're seeing all of this news, do employers actually have the right to implement vaccine mandates on their employees? Uh, are they, they do have the right. Employers do have this right now to mandate vaccinations uh, for their employees, but those rights come with limitations. And some of those limitations, for example, include accommodation for employees that may make a claim uh, on religious grounds or uh, certain medical conditions or disability. Uh, and of course, there are also requirements in terms of privacy and in making certain that, for example, if an employer is mandating or requiring proof of vaccination, uh, that once they have that information and evidence of the vaccination, uh, they have to treat it with as incredibly private confidential health information. So on that, uh, there have been a lot of questions about the sort of debate between privacy versus safety and the obligations of the employers and the employees really on this front. So where do the legal challenges potentially stand in that debate? Well, Arthur, I think you just said it. It's that crux between, it and essentially the balancing act between uh, you know, public safety and protection of rights and protection of privacy. By and large, it would seem and, and appear by all indications from all levels of government that public safety is going to, uh, is going to rule the day. Uh, but there are still privacy concerns that individuals, both employers and employees, need to be aware of, uh, and also exceptions uh, not only around, for example, human rights breaches or potential uh, human rights breaches under uh, the Canadian Human Rights Act or the Ontario Human Rights Code or whatever provincial uh, uh, statute governs human rights, but also those individuals who might be stuck right in the middle. They've had a first dose, but they haven't had a second dose. They've showed intentions to become vaccinated, but they aren't vaccinated yet. And where will they fall within an employer's policy? So there's, there's quite a few questions that, that employers are going to need to be quite vigilant over and, and try and answer. Are you seeing a lot of people come to you with these sorts of questions right now, or in some of the cases, employees for the companies that have already introduced these mandates? Uh, we, we certainly are. And uh, I think in particular now, it's really game on these days, Arthi, because uh, the, the federal government has come through, the city of Toronto has come through, indicating that there will be mandatory uh, COVID policies, COVID vaccination policies at their places of employment. Uh, and they're also encouraging the private sector to implement uh, uh, COVID-19 vaccination policies. So we're seeing a huge uptake Lots of questions, searching for answers in terms of what's appropriate, what's reasonable, how far and strict can an employer uh, can an employer go in so far as implementing these policies and enforcing them. All right. So to that point of how strict an employer can be, given your experience with this scenario now, maybe can you walk us through what the situ situation could look like if employees refuse? Could they actually be fired for not being vaccinated? Uh, well. Uh, Based on these policies, in the case of really strict policies that are introduced, quite potentially, uh, Arthi, uh, employees could be terminated. Uh, however, it, there are protections, of course, for individuals that if the, the, the termination of an employee's employment on the basis of the COVID-19 vaccination uh, uh, refusal, uh, then if, if there have also been breaches of protected grounds under human rights acts, on the basis of disability or on the basis of religious belief or creed, then those will be considered and an employer will not only owe reasonable notice under employment statutes and common law, but also additional damages for breaches under those codes. What about public versus private employees? We know that there is a difference there. So how much leeway exists for those separate realms of employment? Uh, there, there will be different uh, measures and, uh, I, I suppose, safeguards provided to public employees, for example, versus uh, private employees. Uh, public employees, for example, would also have potentially at their fingertips and at the ready uh, charter claims, breach of charter claims, uh, 
under the uh, under the Canadian Charter and potentially uh, constitutional arguments against their employer because, of course, their employer is a is a government actor. Uh, but apart from that, uh, the 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 uh, the statutes, the laws that are available to employees for both a safe workplace but also a workplace that doesn't breach their human rights is available to them. You know, it's interesting because we were listening to the U.S. President Joe Biden speak earlier about uh, the FDA proof, uh, approval of the Pfizer vaccine. And in that address, he said that he's urging other private companies to require vaccines. Um, so he was encouraging that, promoting it. Sure, that's the U.S. and not Canada. But could we see that here? And if we do, is it a bit of a slippery slope? Uh, I mean, we, we have seen it, and, and it looks, it appears as though we are going to continue to see it, particularly, for example, uh, in, in the education sector uh, and the healthcare sector. Uh, I think it's likely that we, we will see more of this. I think those will be political decisions. And then to what extent, for example, those levels, levels of government will provide some source of, you know, resources, precedents, uh, helpful guidelines for employers in terms of enforcing those uh, policies and also developing them. Uh, you know, we'll wait and see if that's also is, you know, part of those announcements. Well, thank you, Ted, for all of that information. I know a lot of Canadians have these questions right now. That was Ted Flett. He is an employment and human rights lawyer in Toronto. Thank you, Ted. Thank you.